This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook, and I have a legend. Sorry, when we say that, we feel old. But yeah, exactly. CEO Tim Kobe of both uh, Eight Inc. and X Eight Ventures, mm -hmm. uh, known specifically for what I think is the legend of design, mm -hmm. of workflow design, architectural design, just an entire business design that. Uh, is world renowned. Mm -hmm. Your stores, specifically Apple and Coke, and the, the, the companies keep going. When you worked with Steve Jobs literally every week for 12 years, yeah. Uh, it, and I mean, this is a genius level person, someone that's accessing information at a speed in which most people don't vibrate. What were a few things that you took away that, not that he told you, that you took away by observing Steve Jobs that were great lessons for you? Yeah, I mean, we we probably, when we were hired, we were probably hired from the benefit of having worked with another another uh, fairly significant individual, a guy named um, Robert Mondavi. He used to make wines in California, yeah. I'm sure you know. And um, what we learned was when, when, when Bob would interview somebody, he would bring in a marketing team and hear three pitches or four pitches, but he would always stop people in the middle of their pitch and say, you know, this doesn't really work for me. What else do you have? And, and the first time he did it, we thought, okay, this is this this you know this company is kind of missing the point. But in fact, he did it to everyone, and he did it in, to everyone to see how they think on their feet and to see how they respond to criticism. You know, yeah. it was much more sort of a character as assessment. Yeah. And when we were hired by Steve, um, we started working on his um, on the, the MacWorld events. We started launching the products with him, and uh, I wrote a white paper on why they should do retail and, and gave it to them. And uh, his assistant called one day and said, you know, Steve would like to see a capabilities presentation of your, of your retail work. And um, he's in the car, he'll be there in 30 minutes. You know? <laughs> and um, so, so, you know, he shows up and he looks at the work and we had done work for Nike and we had done work for the North Face. And he looks at it and, and the first thing he said was, uh, what would you say if I told you I don't like this work? And my business partner, of course, he was just like, oh my God, <laughs> Steve doesn't like the work. Right, and, ego conscious comes out. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, he, he's, he said, none of this looks like Apple. He says, you know, uh, you know why, sh why should I hire you? And, and I said, because none of this looks like Apple. I said, this, this looks like what's right for Nike, this is what's right for the North Face, and what we've been doing for Apple for the last year is, is gonna be, you know, has been right for you guys. And so he sort of paused for a while and, and got up and, thanked us and went out the door, you know. And uh, at that time he said, you know, I, I, I don't know if you've done enough retail yet. And so shook hands and went out and we said, so what does yet mean? Does that mean we're hired or not? So next day he called and uh, we started on a whiteboard sketching, you know, Apple stores. When you have a design, yeah. adjusting is so important. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think the strategy of asking someone, you know, what would you do with this or stop, I don't like, because you don't know fully until there's people flowing through a store. Mm -hmm. Do you have a plan for adjustment? So as you make the design, develop the design, is there room for adjustment within an Apple store when you first started? So you know, with, with, with any project, you, you want to prototype things. And so typically you'll prototype you know, offline. It won't be out in public uh, yet. Um, with Apple, you know, prototyping in, the, in warehouses and things, getting buy-in from different people, getting insights from different people. Ultimately, you don't really know until you open the first store. And the night, night before we opened the first store, um, uh, first Apple store, Steve was sitting on one of the tables, and, and we had just set everything. Everything was you know, beautiful, ready to, to open. And he looked at us, and he said, guys, what if nobody comes tomorrow? <laughs> and, and, you know, we were sort of shocked that at that time he would be asking us that question. But, but you know, I mean, the reality was he was definitely um, uh, concerned, you know, Bloomberg and other, other you know, well-known uh, business pundits were saying this could be a big mistake, and and he didn't want to really suffer through another impact on his on his career at that time. But um, you know, of course, the next morning we had four thousand people waiting in line or something, and it was it was great. But um, you know, there was there's always a bit of that anxiety when you, when you first open because you you just don't know how people are going to react. The interesting thing was um, we started the design of the second generation of the stores after the first year. And that was as much taking the learnings that we had from how people were interacting. Um, we had incredible sales, for example, in the, f in the first flagship in New York. Um, and the number one retail store in the world, by the way. Yeah, that store. It's, yeah, yeah, it may well, still be, may not, but I remember yeah, the first time, I was one of the first people in that store, and yeah. I was 
thinking, and I didn't know you at the time, I said, oh my gosh, this is extraordinary. Like, who could think of this? Now well, I know. <laughs> yeah, well, it was, I mean, you know, really, it's a team, a team of people working on every project. But, but when, you, you know, when you get to the point of understanding um, what, what the initial reaction is to people, and we, we, you know, we found we didn't have enough uh, throughput, that we had more customers than we had retail touch points. And so um, you know, we, we evolved that store I think two or three times in terms of the um, in terms of the evolution of the interactions there, and, and ultimately went to the mobile the mobile uh, you know payment processing because um, <laughs> you know we had too many people waiting in line. There's just too much volume.